Hey everyone, we all know when pressing comics it is important, uh, perhaps treacherous, to make sure you get the right pressure on a book. Too little pressure, wrinkles don't come out. Too much pressure, you pop the staples, or more commonly, you know, split the spine. Um, I'm going to give some simple instructions after a lot of studying, and deceptively simple, I think, um, but it errs on the side of caution. Uh, especially if you're humidifying a book, there's going to be a little less pressure. If you're humidifying a book, that creased spine is is a little slightly damp, and wet paper is weak paper, my friends. We do not we do not want to threaten or otherwise uh, put under any kind of stress damp paper. But it is important to be slightly damp to get some of those wrinkles that make the paper more supple. So I'm going to show you how to do that in this upcoming video. I hope you enjoy it. Take care. Bye bye. Here's this book. It's a Dark Phoenix or uh, Uncanny X-Men 135. It's pretty ratty. It's ripped on there on the right. The spine is super loose. Uh, it's it's dirty. It's it's not very white. The back is even dirtier. It's got foxing and dirt on it. I wasn't going to clean this book initially, just press it, but I think my conscience is going to make me need to clean this sucker too a little bit. So we'll do that. And this particular view or press, I have preheated two aluminum plates, 15 by 15, uh, on top and bottom of the book. Already warm, the book is now ready to be in its sandwich with a silicone paper. I twist, I, it's loose, I twist it till I can't twist it anymore. Then I open it up, if the book's been humidified, I give it a quarter turn. If it's been not been humidified, I give it a half a turn. This time it's not been humidified, so the, the knob at the one o'clock position goes to the seven o'clock position. And then I press it down, and if you do that, and it's not a square bound book, you I won't have any problems. You'll be a okay. This book was absolutely killing me because it needed to be cleaned as well. So instead of really cleaning it with a Mackie clean and eraser or something, I just put in a light box for about an hour and ten minutes with some peroxide on it and with a little spine protector. Let lift up the spine a little bit, and you can see the results at the end for yourself. So here's the book after pressing. Now it's no beauty still, but it looks, I think at least presentable. It's flat, a bit shiny, it's glossy, right? Which is nice, the X-Men letters are relatively clean inside. The books look like, I mean, it's not gonna win any beauty contest, but it's cleaner than it was. It's, I think it's, like I said, it's a little bit, it's at least presentable, it wouldn't be at least embarrassed, but it, you know, but the point is, it's not damaged. The spine didn't come off and it was ripe for falling off. It's barely on there. I'm just gonna cold press this for a day, maybe two days, just so that none of those wrinkles return because those are definitely candidates for returning and we'll cold press it and that's it. Here's the rear of this book before and after. You can look at it and again, I'm not gonna win any beauty contests, but I think it looks better and doesn't look so overly obviously clean, right? It doesn't look terribly clean, but it looks better than it did. Entire front cover, uh, before and after, it doesn't really do a lot of justice, so I'll give you a couple of shots of a couple of the corners so you can tell. Here's a before and after of the bottom right corner at an angle that may help you see a little bit more of what this just very simple press can do. Didn't do much at all, just a really, really, really simple press. Again, this book is not beautiful, but with a little lipstick, it doesn't look too bad, right? It looks a little better in this bottom left-hand corner. I think I'll show you one of the clean parts in the back as well. And here's the rear of the book, and the upper right, a little close up so you can see the difference. I hit it with the Immaculite for an hour and 10 minutes and some 6% peroxide. Uh, that's it. I really didn't Immaculate clean it, eraser, or anything. It just, this is like a low energy cleaning for this particular book. So that's how we did it with the, with the Vivo press. And it's similar, many presses are similar with that, that clamshell, but they have different tightening. It's, it's sort of, it's less tightening if your press has that, that fulcrum. You know, it's like a sandwich and it's it's uh, more tightening if it's just straight up and down. Like, I don't really like the fulcrum ones anyway because they pinch from the back of the um, of the press anyway. And they, the back has got more pressure than the front and you'll need either a clamp to even it out or you have to do some physical adjustments to make it even. I like the ones that apply even pressure so you're not chasing wrinkles from one end of the book. Or I, I just don't like them in any case. The Vivo one's pretty good. I, I like it. Um, it's got a pretty even heat signature with the IR camera, I've shown that in the previous video, and the coil is kind of a of a grid pattern. It's not a coil from the inside out. Uh, in there, you can see where you can see where the heating coil is. It's nice. The aluminum boards, of course, 
help to redistribute the heat more evenly. So you don't have a spot where it's wrinkled more and less wrinkled there. It, and it also adds uh, more even pressure on the book. It acts like a sort of a, like a flywheel or a capacitor for the heat, you know, to let it heat up and cool down more evenly, which provides a more even, a more even cover, which I like. I do, I do not sell the, um, the press on my website, but I have a link to it on Amazon. I do sell aluminum boards that I make, especially I shear and then electro polish and then PVC film coat on one side after they've been polished for uh, pressing for standard sizes of boards, nine by 12, 12 by 12, 12 by 15 and 15 by 15. I do make custom sizes for people. I just made four boards for people that are, uh, I think 11 by 20 that they, they wanted me. So I sure cut those uh, from uh, 6061 aluminum, aircraft key aluminum. Then, um, of course, I make I sell the chamfer boards, the silicone pressing sheets, and the light box, which you which you saw there. That's uh, I used 435 nanometers of light for an hour and 10 minutes. I meant to do an hour, it was an hour and 10 minutes. Uh, I sprayed 6% peroxide on it. I smeared it out with a little Kim wipe so it wasn't like little dots everywhere to like make the peroxide more uniform. Uh, gave it an hour and 10 minutes. Let it dry, and then I had to repress it. I didn't show the repressing because identical and I undid all of my pressing goodness by um, by doing that and so um, I that's it and that's and then I cold press sorry I cold press it at the very end so I put it under a piece of in this case it's three inch thin inch thick but I like to use the half inch what I call the plaid boards I never have any spare ones though to use myself set it under the acrylic encyclopedia dictionary works well as well I just put it under that I'll show you what this looks like it's just it's literally just a big piece of acrylic it's like it's heavy and you can see through it and it's flat. That's why I like it. Uh, but it, that's important in this case because if I hadn't done that, then in uh, a few days, I, I literally have 24 to 48 hours typically, a couple of days, those some of those wrinkles would come back. Uh, they'd, re, they'd return. So we don't want that. So therefore we use the cold press. And then after that, we're done. We put it in a bag and board and, and that's it. That's And the, the beauty of the comic is saved and it's not falling apart. It won't end up in a dumpster in somebody's apartment complex after a while. So... Uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Take care. See you later. Bye-bye. See you. Bye.